everybody. <clears throat> Do you know something? I love pirates. Do you know why I love pirates? Because they do the weirdest things. Right? So here we have a pirate, Guy Brush by name, who breaks with pirate tradition, the long-standing pirate tradition that you never invent your own cannons. They're all the same on every pirate ship. But Guy Brush, <coughs> he's inventive, and he breaks tradition, so he makes his own cannon. And what he finds is that when he shoots his cannon, that when he's aiming at a target that is 200 meters away, the shot takes 1.5 seconds to get to the target. So to draw a little picture here of what that might look like. So here we have our cannon. We know that it's shot at some sort of angle. Don't know what that angle is. But we do know that the distance between where the cannon launched and where it lands is 200 meters. And we know how much time it takes to get that 200 meters. It takes 1.5 seconds. Well, <clears throat> some things that a physics person would like to know are things like, huh, what would be the velocity of the cannonball, its horizontal and its vertical components on impact? In other words, on, when it lands. When the cannonball gets here, what is our Vx and our Vy? Projectiles, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to look at how can we use what we have here. How can we figure that information out if we only are given the distance and the time? <clears throat> now, key here, first thing you want to do is figure out for this distance, what kind of number is it? Is it an X number or is it a Y number? It turns out it's an X number. Because it's going 200 meters sideways away from the pirate ship. So I know for my X numbers here that is a DX. Okay, and this question is a little bit different than other questions we've had because we also already know the time. We have a time of 1.5 seconds. <clears throat> so this one's a little bit different because we're not actually having to calculate time first. So, question A, calculate the horizontal velocity upon impact. What else do we know about X? X, we also know the acceleration. It's always going to be zero because we pretend there's no air resistance, so there's nothing to slow it down in the side-to-side -side direction. Okay? Well, we're looking for Vx. Right? Well, what equations do we have that will solve Vx for us? We have that original equation. So look at your equation sheets. We have a bunch. There's, what I love about physics is there's more than one way to solve this one. But I'm going to go back to this one because this equation does a lot for us. It uses a lot of pieces, which in some ways makes it a little bit harder, but it also allows it to be more useful. So when we look at this equation, Notice we have a D. I'm going to replace these with X's because I want to remember I should only be using X numbers. Um, <clears throat> in my DX, I know it's 200. And again, to make it easier to see, I'm not going to put the units in here. Please make sure you understand which units should go in there and how they cancel. My V1X is my unknown. And my time is 1.5 seconds plus one-half times my acceleration, which is zero, times 1.5 squared. Well, having that acceleration of zero is nice because then that whole piece right here cancels out. <clears throat> so then I'm left with 200 equals Vx times 1.5. Well, on my calculator then, I just got to do a little bit of algebra here. I need to divide 
both sides by 1.5 to get my Vx. So 200 divided by 1.5 equals 133.33. That's meters per second. Okay, now that goes right here. But is that the velocity when it launched, when it lands, what is it? It's actually all of them. Remember, for the x velocity, if your acceleration is zero, that means the velocity doesn't change. Acceleration is change of velocity. So my Vx on my pirate ship here is 133.33. It's 133.33 everywhere. So right here, it's also 133.33. So calculate the horizontal velocity upon impact. That is 133.33 meters per second. <clears throat> All right. Well, what about the vertical velocity? Hmm. Well, let's think about now y numbers. What do we know for y? Well, we know the acceleration. What is it? Negative 9.8. Why? Because of gravity. We know the time. Right? And if you look at this, we really don't seem to know anything else. However, my picture doesn't show. So let's think about this. When you launch a projectile, when it lands, we know that the total time is 1.5 seconds. Right. What do we know about the velocity in the y direction at the peak? And what do we know about the time at the peak? Well, we know the y velocity is zero because that's the point in time in the flight where it stops going up and then immediately starts falling back down which means that for a moment, for an instant, the up and down speed must be zero. We also know that if the total time is 1.5 seconds, the peak is always half of the total time. So what's one half of 1.5? Time at the peak then must be 0 0.75 seconds. Now, that helps us tremendously. I'm going to say when it lands. Because we could use this as a V1. And this landing spot here could be a V2. Hmm. We have an equation on our equation sheet that says V2 equals V1 plus A times T. Right? V2 is what we're looking for. V1 is 0. Some of you might be asking, isn't our V1 actually when it launches and we don't know that? Technically, yeah, but these equations allow us to say, well, what if we only knew the velocity here? If we know the time from the peak to landing, then we also know the velocity. This could be like our V1. So it's really just saying, hey, this V1 must be the velocity that happens before the V2. Okay, so it doesn't actually have to be first and last. Okay, what's our A? Negative 9.8. What's our time? 1.5. So, pull out your calculator. I have a negative 9.8 times 1.5. <coughs> Oops, sorry. Not 1.5. Wow, I made a mistake. Remember, that's the total. 0.75. I'm just going to divide that by 2. Let's double check. Negative 9.8 times 0.75. Yep. So V2 equals negative 7.35. Now, what I just did there actually shows you, you got a lot of numbers. Always double check your work. Make sure your numbers make sense. Okay? So V2 is negative 7.35. Well, where is that? That's right here. And that, then, is our answer for letter B. Okay? Now, that's all good, right? 
But what if we wanted to know how fast is it going? Take this out now. Yeah, all those numbers. <clears throat> how fast was it going when it launched? Okay. Well, let's think about this some more. So we have our projectile, our cannonball. We now know the VX everywhere. You know, the VX here was 133.33. We know the VX at the peak is 133.33. We know the VX when it lands is 133.33. We also already figured out that the VY at the peak was zero. And we just calculated that the VY when it lands is negative 7.35. We actually already know the answer to this question. Because remember, when the projectile lands, if we are talking about the same height, the VY, when it lands, is the same number, but it's falling downward. And that's why it's negative. So we already know the VY here. Instead of being negative 7.35, it's a positive 7.35. That was one of those patterns that we said we have to make sure we get memorized. Okay? Got all my units in there. So... How do we calculate the actual initial velocity then of the cannonball? What this is saying here is when the cannonball is launched, what is its actual velocity? And if we imagine a horizontal line, what angle is it launched at? That's what letter D is asking. This one's a little different than what we've done because we actually... Normally, we have said, okay, we already know the speed and we know the angle. And we use Sokotoa to break it down so we could figure out the Vx and the Vy. This one's different because we actually calculated the Vx and the Vy. We know the Vx, 133.33, and we know the Vy, 7.35. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of Sokotoa in reverse on this one. So on this one, we need Pythagorean theorem. Where we have to remember, and this is on your equation, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Okay, doesn't matter which side we pick as an a, I'm going to pick that as a is going to be b, and c is always your hypotenuse. So, we say, okay, 133.33 repeating squared plus 7.35 squared must equal C squared. Calculator time. 133.33 squared plus 7.35 squared. Notice I got parentheses in there just in case. That gives me that number, but to get rid of the square on the C, I'm going to have to take the square root of everything. So I'm going to take the square root, second, square button, my answer. <clears throat> you might be looking at that and saying, well, that's the same number. Careful. A little bit different. Notice it's 0.53. Now, why is that number so close to this? If you compare this, if I were really doing this to scale, 133 is almost 20 times bigger than this. So it'd be like having a triangle where this is really, really long, and this is really, really short. So our hypotenuse is not going to be much bigger than that side. Okay, So that is the actual velocity, right? Now we need to figure out this angle. So for the angle, let's think about that. We can use Sokotoa again, but 
we're going to be using that inverse that, you know, on your calculator has that negative 1 next to it. Got a lot of options. I like to use tangent on this one just because we don't get to use tangent very much. Okay, so tangent, remember, means opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we're going to say tangent of theta of our angle equals the opposite side, opposite, 7.35 over the adjacent, 133.33. So on my calculator, though, to do this, to get the angle, I'm going to take tangent, and it's negative 1 of that fraction. So tangent and that's the angle I get. So our final answer will be 133.53 meters per second at an angle of 3.16 degrees. That's the actual speed when the cannonball comes out of the cannon and the angle, it's almost horizontal, but just a little bit up. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. If this video helped, if it made sense, please give me a thumbs up on that. That's an easy way for me to figure out if these videos are working. Enjoy your day.